football calendar turning from September to October means non-conference play. That's done. Now we begin conference play, and it's the Big Ten opener for both Wisconsin and Northwestern. Hi again, everyone. Bob Wischusen here with Brock Ewart. Allison Williams will join us from down on the field in just a moment. We spoke with Paul Christ, head coach of the Badgers yesterday, and he was very blunt with us. We have not been tested yet. We're going to find out a lot about Wisconsin, and I think Paul Christ is interested to find out about his team as well. Conference play begins. Opponents you're familiar with. It's a different level of intensity, and it starts today. It sure does. And, and everybody, I think, around the country is penciled Wisconsin is in winning this division, this side of the Big Ten. It's them and everybody else and I think Paul is right let's be careful this isn't the team we saw last year they're replacing NFL defensive ends right there they've got a, a young quarterback that is still finding himself a little bit and they're facing an opponent in Northwestern and while I don't put a lot of stock in what happened in the early 2000s when a team has beaten you six of the last 11 times two of the last three they know you and that's the beauty of conference play we saw it last night with USC and Washington State conference play is a different animal than the month of September although Allison Wisconsin today is going to be without one of their most familiar targets. Yeah, Bob, they will be without leading receiver tight end Troy Fumagalli, the senior captain, out with a left hamstring injury. He was limited in practice this week, but the team was optimistic he could play until he met with the athletic trainers this morning and was ruled out. Head coach Paul Chris said it doesn't change what they'll try to do schematically on offense, but certainly some concern about being able to execute without Fumagalli. Keep in mind, guys, the two that have to step up in his absence, Xander Neville and Kyle Penniston, have combined for just 11 career receptions. 2004, the Badgers are 79 and 10 here at Camp Randall among Power Five programs. Only Ohio State, and Oklahoma have a better win percentage during that time. Northwestern won the toss, deferred their option to the second half. Lucado sends it deep, and we are underway. AJ Taylor will let it go through the back of the end zone. And that brings Alex Hardybrook onto the field and Brock 200 or more yards in all three starts so far this season, throwing at a 70% clip. You go 18 and 19 as he did last week at BYU. That's great against air. I mean, out of practice, you'll take 18 for 19, 250 and four touchdowns. We called this game a year ago in Evanston. And, and Hornibrook, a redshirt freshman, a little bit lost. You know, not nearly the anticipation and the confidence he is playing with this season. Originally, he committed to play at Pitt for Paul Christ. And even after Paul Christ took the Wisconsin job, thought twice about giving up on that commitment, but he starts off one for one. Jazz Peavy loses the football, and it looks like Northwestern may have recovered. Who's got it? It is Northwestern football on the first play from scrimmage. Trey Williams knocks it out. He's got the recovery. And Northwestern starts in plus territory. I don't think there's any doubt about this. I love the call. You got a red hot quarterback. It's just sprint left option. Redshirt senior PV who had a great game against Northwestern last year. He catches it. He makes a football move. There is no doubt that Trey Williams sneaks that hand in. And then uh, look at the pursuit. Pat Fitzgerald's teams through all the years. You can watch any tape you want over the last 12 seasons. And his guys run to the football, got to steal possessions, and they just stole the opening one. We'll see how the Badger defense deals with sudden change. First carry of the game for Justin Jackson. And if he puts up 109 yards today, he would become the all-time leading rusher in Northwestern history as he has run for 1,000 or more yards his first three seasons at Northwestern, looking for another 1,000-yard season as a senior. Clayton Thorson, right at the first down marker. The toe tap by Bennett Skoranek. And it looks like he's a yard shy. Brings up an important third down on the opening possession. And these are the third downs that Clayton's going to want to live in today. Just one of ten in their loss at Duke earlier this year. It was it was tough going, but there weren't many third and ones in those situations. But the opening call, get the run game going a little bit, and they want 18 to be active with his legs as well today. They give it to Jackson on third down. He's going nowhere. Leon Jacobs drags him down behind the line, and that is a great stand after the turnover for the Wisconsin defense. It's a three and out, and that means a true freshman. Charlie Kubander will come on to attempt a field goal. I don't think we'll see that scheme again. Uh, this is not a two tight end pound you team, and nobody blocks the edge player there. An easy tackle for loss for Jacobs. 
from 34 yards out. That gets Northwestern on the board. So the turnover for Wisconsin costs them three. But it could have been worse. As PB coughed it up, when we come back, we'll take a look at our southpaw slingers. What? As Brock Ewart spent some time with Mr. Hornybrook. Back in Madison, Northwestern on top by three early. Bob Shoes and Brock Ewart. And Allison Williams. The turnover costs Wisconsin a field goal. But the three and out defensively, that's a good early stand for that Badger defense. Yeah, and some miscommunication between a couple veterans there on Northwestern's line. You just cannot allow free runners in those situations. And that might be the, the buffest kicker I think I've ever seen. Luke Otto to the one-yard line. A.J. Taylor brings it out. Ooh, and he gets dropped at about the 20. He lost the football as well. It's loose. Another pile up for it. And Northwestern thinks they've got yet another takeaway. No signal yet. Wisconsin maintains possession of the football, avoids disaster. What would have been back to back giveaways inside their own 25 yard line. A more physical team here early, and you could hear some gasps in this crowd right below us in the press box, and that is as fundamental as you get. Helmet right on the football. That is at full speed there for the safety, Jared McGee. That is difficult to do, running down on that kickoff cover. Slow yourself down and fundamentally put your helmet right on the football to separate returner Taylor, in that case, from the ball. I'm next to a lefty quarterback up here in the booth, and Brock Hewitt and Alex Hornibrook. The sophomore lefty for the Badgers takes over at his own 19. There's a freshman carrying it out to the 30-yard line. Jonathan Taylor picks up a first down. And for Brock Eward yesterday, it was deja vu. <laughs> what do you think? As you look at me, do I look like you throwing or no? Yeah, it's a lefty. I don't throw too many lefties. <laughs> you don't throw too many lefties? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's really weird, man. Just a lot of things, how upright you are, how you finish, mm -hmm. almost even where your elbow pulls. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a lot of similarity. Yeah. How many lefties have you played catch with? Um, not too many. I actually try not to most of the time because it spins oh. the other way. Oh, really? I don't like catching lefties. Oh, you don't like catching lefties, do no. you? <laughs> oh, really? Are there freshmen that come in and like, jeez. That ball comes a different way or anything? Yeah, they don't really, they're pretty good about not complaining about where the ball's coming. They're just catching it. And, um, but I, I notice sometimes, not anymore really, they're used to it, but yeah. probably the first spring that I was showing to some guys that they were a little bit off when they were catching yep. the ball, and I knew that it was because of spin. They just never said it. Not many of us left, Bob. Not many of us left. <laughs> Most are pitching now. <laughs> Second down and three. For Horny Brook as he lines up with two tight ends, gives it to his freshman workhorse, making a move with a nice jump cut is Jonathan Taylor. And Alex Horny Brook said, not a big fan of catching the ball from lefties. I'm not that big of a fan either. <laughs> but he has been off to such an efficient start. Not an explosive start, but his efficiency has been extraordinary. Welcome to playing quarterback at the University of Wisconsin. That is what you are asked to do. You are going to facilitate. You're going to get everybody involved. And it's the anticipation. It jumps off the screen from one season ago, and that comes with trust and confidence, according to everybody in this program. Jonathan Taylor drives the pile close to the 40-yard line. Well, I know, Brock, that the narrative for Clemson is look who they lost. They lost NFL guys on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Of course, their best wide receiver and the quarterback both being high draft choices. So there's naturally going to be some suspicion about whether or not they can be a national championship team again. Teams probably take that personally. Yep, but be dominant at the line of scrimmage, and you can quiet a lot of those fears. Taylor again. That's a first down carry. Brett Walsh dragged down the true freshman from New Jersey, Jonathan Taylor, but he has power, especially in his lower body at 215 pounds. It is so hard for guys like Jonathan, who played in a system in high school, and he broke records and was phenomenal, as all these high school running backs seemingly do, and he bounces the ball and runs outside. It can be so hard to transition to this level where you have got to play in tight spaces, where you have got to, at times, run into darkness, but, man, does he... And has he ever climbed that learning curve? He loves the physical contact. 
Play action for Hornibrook. Goes through his progressions, comes back to the near side and finds Cephas. That's a first down. That is exactly right. That is a progression read. He is looking to the top of the field. He's got a little comeback. He doesn't like it. He sees that zone cover and just watch his eyes. After this fake, he is looking. He's got a deep comeback to his left. Zone coverage underneath. He's not doing that last year. There is no part of Alex Hornibrook that was doing that last year. He may have scrambled, right, but the, the eyes are just so locked in and the focus to go for my comeback, come across, and then it's going to be a high-low read with the curl flat. Take it. Shaw gets to the edge to the 15-yard line. We've got two quarterbacks in today's game that went to the Manning Passing Academy, and both coaches talked about what they thought that did for both of these quarterbacks. Yeah, and for Hornibrook, it was just learning, you know what, I, I'm such a pleaser, and I want everybody to see me watching tape, but no, it's about what I do outside of this facility. That's where my real work comes in. He said, you know, Peyton's advice to him was do not ever watch tape without having your notebook in front of you. It is a waste of time. You better put that preparation on paper, go back and study it. And you see him making significant strides this season. Back to the freshman, Jonathan Taylor, cut back to the 10-yard line, picks up five, and that's a first down. It'll be first and goal for Wisconsin. That's a couple times now, and that's a one-on-one. -on -one. That is a shot, right? The ultimate team game, and look at it. You can see once again, it is Brett Walsh there, the linebacker, a one-on-one -on -one situation. We've had two of these now. you got to come up. Actually, it's Patty, excuse me, the middle linebacker, Patty Fisher that time. In those one-on-one -on -one situations, you have got to find cloth. Jonathan Taylor, even as a big, powerful back, is able to make people miss in space. Six carries for 40 yards already for Taylor. He gets the call on first and goal. And he drives his way down to about the six-yard line for a gain of four. Godwin Igwebuke made the stop. We're early, and these numbers are going to take a whole lot more shape and meaningful shape in Big Ten play. But traditionally, you get down inside the 10. The Badgers have been the best. We're right near the top of the charts when it comes down to finding touchdowns in the red zone. The former tight end himself, Paul Christ. You slow this game down, you minimize possessions. You know you cannot settle down here in first and goal situations for field goals. Troy Fumagalli out with a hamstring injury. Remember, last year we called the Cotton Bowl. He was the MVP of that game. He's a red zone machine. They're going to keep it on the ground here. Crab crawling to the goal line and into the end zone with a Wisconsin touchdown is Jonathan Taylor. Wow. That kid was playing high school football last September in your beloved state of New Jersey. He was playing high school football. And some of these freshmen that come in, and we see it every year, they just make it look easy. How is that possible? How are you doing that? It's talent. It's fundamentals. It's coaching. You throw those in, and you've got another stud running back here at the University of Wisconsin. Well, Taylor had over 2,800 yards and 35 touchdowns as a high school senior. And he is already off to a nearly 500-yard start for Wisconsin. That's his sixth rushing touchdown in the first four games for the Badgers. Seven-play, 47-yard touchdown drive. Just under four minutes off the clock for Wisconsin, and they've got the 7-3 lead. So now we'll see if Northwestern can answer. Bob Lashusen here with Brock York, Allison Williams of Camp Randall. Zach Hens descended deep. It'll come out to the 25. Clayton Thorson back to work. Over the middle, on time. A strike to Riley Lees for 15 yards and a first down. Well, Pat Fitzgerald told us it's been Grand Central Station at our facility lately. Next week when they play Penn State at home, seven general managers in the NFL have already applied for credentials to come see Clayton Thorson. Yeah, and they got a guy named Saquon Barkley that'll be in that game too that I think a few of the NFL folks like, but they love the prototypical stature of, of Clayton. 
And off to Larkin. He picks up about two or three yards. Not sure why you had to throw Saquon Barkley in there and ruin the whole prior to Clayton Thorson narrative, but that's fine. That's yeah. the team player you are. I get it. Well, he's a pretty talented running back. And Clayton's very talented. It's just cutting it loose. I mean, that's what I want to say. I just want to see, and it's what his coaches and everybody wants to see, and that may be running a little bit this afternoon, and sometimes even running a little bit more than he's comfortable with. Second down and seven. They'll run the option again. There's the pitch out from Thorson. First down and more as Larkin gets across the 50. Have you seen that wrinkle from Northwestern running the sprint option with Thorson yeah, much? A little speed option. No, I have not. But I think that is. That's an indicator of he's a good athlete. Get him out on the edge. Good blocking out in front of Larkin again. Another seven and a half, eight yards as Olive Songapolu made the stop for Wisconsin, but the ground game getting it done for Northwestern. And it's just positive yards. I mean, seven is great. That, that last first down of three yards, it's what you were not getting a year ago. You threw, you threw, you threw, you fell behind a couple touchdowns in this matchup last year. This is more indicative of the two times that you have beaten them over the last three years. And they stay with the red shirt freshman at tailback Larkin play action. And now Larkin catches the check down and has a first down. As he was able to drag Nick Nelson for about five yards, but it's another first down for the Cats. It's very similar to Hornibrook. We saw Hornibrook on that last touchdown drive do what? A progression read. He wanted to come to the comeback, and he comes all the way back across the field. Same thing with Thorson there. And that is the value of playing two, three years of having the reps, the same system, to be able to find those checkdowns. Those checkdowns often do turn into first downs. Let's coming off the edge. It gets picked up. Thornton, the right, runs right into it. Dakota Dixon came on a safety blitz. It was picked up, but he and Garrett Dooley eventually find Thorson as he runs right into the rush. That's a little bit of the fine line there, and I know that Clayton has been asked to run, keep plays alive a little bit, but this is a fast defense. And Dixon, I don't think there's any doubt, is the heartbeat of that group defensively. And when you're not naturally a runner and a run-first guy, you know, you're going to walk a fine line between doing that or just simply throwing the ball away at times as well. Second down at 12. Jackson. Maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. There's Dakota Dixon coming up and run support. You want to talk about a guy that survived a very tough upbringing down in the worst neighborhoods in Miami? It's Dakota Dixon. Both of his parents had substance abuse issues. His dad died of a heart attack after dealing with those substance abuse issues. His mom just disappeared. But a woman his father had a relationship, Beth Caston. Talk about the guardian angels we have. She took Dakota Dixon and his brother in and raised them. And now Dixon might be headed to the NFL after he gets done here at Wisconsin. Third down and 10. Middle screen. Diagnosed by the Badgers. Now what do you do? It's a long field goal attempt for a true freshman, Charlie Kubander. It's an equally long fourth down and nine. You let the play clock run out. You think about it. You get into the second quarter of this game. You know, Pat told us yesterday he was not going to put a freshman kicker into kicking 50 yarders. You know, it's just not going to be not, not that he couldn't. He had the talent to do so, but just was not going to put that kind of pressure on a freshman early. Well, we'll see what Northwestern decides to do on fourth down and nine when we come back. Wisconsin with a 7-3 lead after one. Well, if you want your kid to take Wisconsin as a possible collegiate choice, bring them to Madison in late September. Beautiful. Because it has been spectacular here. And some Northwestern fans obviously making the drive up. Orson will quarterback sneak. Does he move the pile enough? It looks like the officials will say yes. The far side official is running in well ahead of our first down line to gain. And yes, without measurement, fourth and one, it is a first down for Northwestern. You see the coach there, a little pat on the back. That a boy, Pat. He's going to be aggressive. He's naturally wired that way anyway. 6'4", 225 pounds, and a good athlete is Clayton Thorson. And I like that call. It also takes more time off the clock, shortens the game. As you said, they'll start the third quarter with the football. So all around, that's a win for the Wildcats. I'll take a shot. 
Let's see if they do. Thorson in the shotgun. Jackson to his right. Instead, it will be Jackson. Blockers out in front, but he is met. Popped by T.J. Edwards. No gain on first down. Once again, that is just team football in that front. It's a D-line for Wisconsin that may not be as stout, especially on the edges, as they've been over the last few years. But the Cotton Bowl defensive MVP, six tackles, sack tackle for loss in this game last year. He scrapes, thanks to the big man in front of him, right into that collision with Jackson. Breaking a tackle is Garrett Dickerson, the superback, inside the 20. Down to the 16-yard line. He had nine catches for 150 yards a couple of weeks ago in the blowout of Bowling Green, the most yards receiving ever for a Northwestern superback in the history of this program, and he makes it third down and four. Big play here. Jeremy Larkin back in at tailback. Dickerson lines up as the inline tight end on third down and three and a half. Thorson, a little jump pass, breaking another tackle, but stepping out of bounds is Dickerson. Where did he step out? It might be fourth down again. He is right at the line to gain. And that was a cool little wrinkle. That is not something that I have seen with this group, and that's what you do off of a bye week. You're going to run Thorson, and you run him a little bit more in this first half than usual, but you're also then going to have an outlet. That's a little zone read. He pulls it. He knows he's going to get that defender aggressive with Wisconsin. A little wrinkle with the pass game off of it to move the sticks. He got just enough. Without measurement, the officials looked across and gave him the first down. Larkin to the 10-yard line. That was the first third down conversion, by the way, for Northwestern. They were 0 for 5 before Dickerson got it by about a half yard. So where's this coming? Wisconsin's been brilliant, as they always are in red zone defense. Just 25%, two of eight are opponents. They've given up three touchdowns in three games for Jim Leonard. Where is your matchup that you like? If you're Clayton Thorson, right? Mick McCall, offensive coordinator, where is my one-on-one? -on -one? Where is Dickerson when I need him in this matchup? Thorson, bullets one to the goal line. It was caught. Did it break the plane? The answer is no. It'll be a first down inside the one. James Prather was able to haul it in, but just couldn't squeeze the ball across the goal line. And good protection, good pocket there for Thorson, and it wasn't the superback Dickerson. It was the superback Prather, the big body getting right around that goal line, right in the middle of that zone coverage. Look at this game. I mean, Wisconsin's the one who wants to shorten it. Wisconsin is the one that wants to minimize possessions. Wisconsin is number one in the country in time of possession coming into today. Northwestern playing a little badger ball here on this possession. First and goal inside the one. Play action. Throwing it into the end zone, wide open for the touchdown, Clayton Thorson. He finds Cameron Green. And for the sophomore, that is his first ever touchdown reception. Obviously not the guy that Wisconsin was keying on. And Northwestern takes the lead. And somewhere his dad, Mark, the former Golden Domer, Chicago Bears, saying that a boy. That's my converted wide receiver. And Pat Fitzgerald is saying, we don't need our matchups on the outside. Uh, we don't need just our wide receivers. We can use our super backs. We can use our running backs. We can use our tight ends. And a Richard Jr. quarterback right now that is hot. A 44-yard touchdown drive, Brock, that took 12 plays and over six and a half minutes off the clock. As easy as could be for Cameron Green and the Wildcats, I believe. Could be an eventful two and a half minutes still here before halftime as Wisconsin about to get the football back, now trailing. And it will come out to the 25-yard line. Rhythm. It's a big drive to get in some rhythm, whether it's going to be a touchdown, just three points, got all three timeouts, plenty of time for Wisconsin, but their offense right now, other than one possession, has been hit in the backfield too many times in no tempo, no rhythm whatsoever. Well, Hornybrook, two of six for 13 yards. He's got a ground attack, though. Weaving his way for about three is Jonathan Taylor. 
Wisconsin's offensive coordinator Joe Rudolph also coaches the offensive line and guys he's frustrated he told his players you have to wake up you need to play together and you need to fight together right now they're not doing their job individually or playing collectively and coaches told us a key in this game would be the play of their interior linemen and how they handle Northwestern's tackle so he spent a lot of time talking to those guys about what they're seeing how they're feeling inside and really emphasizing technique not getting turned sideways Quintez Cephas wide open as he runs a simple out. The two tight ends to the near side might have thrown off Northwestern. So a good game on ESPN and a good one here on ABC as well. As Hardybrook looks deep, jump ball, and that's intercepted. Picked off by Godwin, Igwe Buque. And he is dragged down at about the 30-yard line of Northwestern. Another takeaway for the Wildcats. As Kyle Penniston was the intended receiver, but Hornybrook just threw that one up for grabs. Yeah, remember, there is no Troy Fumagalli today. And Fumagalli is a guy that Hornybrook trusts with everything on this football field and would throw it up into one-on-one -on -one situations. He's trying to do the same to Penniston, but Godwin, Iguabuke, sees it the entire way. Look at him. He's playing the play. You throwing it to me? That, that is the moment. We've seen a few of these this year, Bob, where those secondary guys are going, please throw this, please throw this, please throw this. And a fifth-year senior, he's going to play in the NFL. He reads it, diagnoses it, and most importantly, finishes it. Yet another takeaway for Northwestern defensively. Underthrown, pressure on Clayton Thorson. That's incomplete. Ligue Buque. Coming into the season, Todd McShay had him as number four among draft-eligible safeties. This is a young guy who was thinking about going to Ohio State because his parents both went there, but he had committed to Northwestern as a junior in high school. Then all of a sudden, the Buckeyes and the Michigan Wolverines come calling. So you know what? I am sticking with my commitment. I am going to Northwestern, even if my parents aren't all that happy about it. And his pit sets up the Wildcats here, but Clayton Thorson is now 0 for 2 to start off this drive, and it's third down and 10. Yeah, I was going to say to start this drive, to be honest with you, with just under two minutes to go, I, I it would have been a run-run for me. I, I know you want to pay off the takeaways. You feel like you've got the momentum after a six-minute drive, but now you've gone incomplete, incomplete. If I'm Wisconsin here, I'm using that timeout. If you can get you know the ball stopped here and force that punt, you use no clock here to pay off this takeaway if you cannot find a third and ten conversion. And the play clock down to ten. Third down and ten. It's a four-man rush. Thorson has to escape the pocket. Wide open. It's a walk-away first down for Nathan Wilson. If Thorson can put it on him, and he can. And that's the play right there that you circle. And if you're going to come in this building, it's going to be a quarterback and running back that are going to beat you and beat Wisconsin. It's this one. Everything done right. Uh, Clayton's eyes are up. Everything is there. You just have to throw a catch and run ball right there. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be per perfect. But Macon is out front on a third and ten to get a conversion. You can just play a little pitch and catch. He would have easily had the first down. Yep. And that drive took 13 seconds off the clock. Nick Nelson gets a block. Gets cut down at the 42-yard line. But you can't ask for much better for Wisconsin than that exchange. 13 seconds off the clock. A three and out by your defense. And now you start with great field position with 123 to go before halftime. Again, a four-man rush. This time he does find a window. And that is good for a first down to Kyle Penniston. And it's like a, a, an extra out in baseball, right? When you throw a pick like that and another tough pick and the team gets it and you go three and out in 13 seconds, you feel like, man, I just got life. I just got a little bit of energy back on my side of the ball. Orny Brooks sets up the screen. Chris James looking for room. And boy, fighting their way through some blocks where the Wildcats led by Fred Wyatt. So Wisconsin will use a timeout here with just over a minute to go before halftime. They're first. Straight back to throw. Horny Brook, this time pretty well protected, but then the protection collapses. Did the ball come out? Joe Gaziano gets the sack. Did he get the strip and a takeaway? No signal from the officials.
Gaziano came away with the football as well. Let's see what the ruling on the field is. Well, the quarterback was down, third down. Well, I don't know. Not only can they rule that a fumble if they go to replay, but if Gaziano has clear recovery, that would be a Northwestern takeaway. And yeah, that ball is out. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Now, would you call that clear recovery by Gaziano? Hornybrook, if that's 50-50, I guess, on the ground. Yep. You could say that Wisconsin yep. maintains possession of the football. And that call on the field, I think, pretty critical there as well. No yeah. doubt. And that is not clear to me. That is not clear and decisive and immediate recovery. Third down and 11 after all of that. Hornybrook, this time he's going to take a shot down the sideline. Battling for the football was Quintez Cephas, but it's broken up. Andre Hardage again in coverage. Crowd looking for a flag, and nothing comes out. Yeah, this ball has just got to get out there. You know, we saw a go route earlier, and there's some hand fighting. And I'll tell you what, this is consistent with the way this game has been called in the first half. If you're not going to call the block in the back, or you're not going to call the little contact on, a, on, a, on the interception, I don't think you can call that. There is no face guarding in college football. Both of them are hand fighting. That's on the quarterback, again, to put that ball out in front of that wide receiver. That's Terrell. Wanted to make sure he had 11 on the field, especially in that area where you could consider, if you really were trying to flip the momentum in the game before halftime, Wisconsin could fake it. To watch, and Pat Fitzgerald loved that first half, man. Got a lead in this building. They've beaten this team two out of three times, and he has to love the way his defensive front seven handled a run game for Wisconsin that had a real hard time getting going. So Northwestern will start the third quarter with the football in the lead. 10-7, our score at halftime. We'll have the halftime report after these messages. Welcome back to College Football, presented by Walmart. A beautiful day here in Madison to watch the Big Ten on ABC. Northwestern set to start the third quarter with the football, and they also have the lead, 10-7. Over Wisconsin here at Camp Randall. Bob Wischusen, Brock Ewer, Allison Williams just about set for the start of the third quarter. Again, we met with Paul Christ yesterday. He told us the team has not been tested yet. Yep. Sometimes that's lip service from a coach, but I think we got the feeling talking to him yesterday that was not lip service. He called what we've seen so far today. Yeah, he knew. You've got a familiar opponent that plays you really tough. Now, I don't think he knew or his offensive coordinator, Joe Rudolph, that Northwestern would handle them at the line of scrimmage. The Northwestern's group defensively has handled them. They have gotten after the running game. They've created three takeaways there on that defensive side of the ball. And I know that uh, the old tight end in a program built at the line of scrimmage. There were some words said at halftime to clean that up. Clayton Thorson in the first half. 10 of 15 for 74 yards and a touchdown. But now going up against a Wisconsin team that, again, not great competition through the first three weeks. But this Wisconsin defense has not allowed a second half point. So they, you would think, would give their offense every opportunity to get back in the game. Justin Jackson only seven carries for 12 yards in the first half. Thorson on the slant on first down. Skoranek is able to go down and scoop it up. A gain of seven as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And it was takeaways right from the very go. The very first play of the game. You see the corner there defensively. Trey Williams poke his hand in. The rest of the Wildcats running over. J.R. Pace with a nice interception over the top. And equal bouquet even as well. Finish off. Three big takeaways that first half. Another slant. This one to Flynn Nagel. And that's good for a first down. And on one side of it, you get three takeaways if you're Northwestern. You possess the ball for three more minutes than Wisconsin. You hold them to just 66 yards rushing, and yet you've got a three-point lead. You just were not able to pay off just three points off of all those takeaways. And coming out of the gate here in the second half, crucial. Option. Plenty of room to run for Jackson as he picks up at least five. And guys, the biggest thing the Wisconsin offense needs to clean up here in the second half is, of course, the turnovers. But I talked to Paul Chris at the half. He didn't seem overly concerned, especially when you consider the way his team has played in the second half of games this year, outscoring their three 
beat previous opponents to a tune of 73 to nothing. Of course, he doesn't exactly expect that here today. He said this is a great Northwestern team we're going up against. But the beauty of this sport is you just need all 11 guys to make their do their job each play, and that's a great challenge and opportunity we have here today. Well, that time Nick Nelson did his job, knocked it away from Garrett Dickerson that brings up a third down. Now, these are big. Every single one of these in a shortened game here of possessions in the second half. Northwestern just one of seven on third downs. Two of those were third ones. One was a miss by Clayton. They ultimately convert one fourth down on their touchdown drive, but finding ways to convert against this aggressive defense here, huge. How exotic does Jim Leonard get now on third down? He's showing him again. Look at all the pre-snap movement here. Four-man rush on third down and long. Thorson, can he get away this time? He cannot. The Badgers make sure they get the sack. Talk about flipping field position. Alec James brings down Clayton Thorson. And sometimes you blitz and you get exotic and you bring guys from everywhere and then there's other times you just rush for and that time Alex James inside swim move nowhere and no space for Thorson to run and you pay off taking that penalty right you, you force the third and 22 with that penalty and now you're at a fourth and 33 and a chance to get positive field position from the Thorson scramble to that sack Northwestern lost 25 yards of field position although some field position given back as Nick Nelson was not able to corral that punt on the bounce the pass rush from Wisconsin gets home and they've got it when we come back could be a tone setting drive to start off the second half after Wisconsin got the stop for their offense they'll begin with Jonathan Taylor and he'll maybe get a yard or two. It'll be second down and eight. It may seem unusual to see uh, number one big 315 pound defensive lineman in there for Northwestern, but that's Tyler Lancaster, who is our player spotlight brought to you by the United States Air Force. His teammates voted for him to wear that number because he exemplifies the characteristics of a Northwestern football player, especially his work ethic, which shows up in the weight room big time, guys. Check that out. 37 reps of 225 pounds. That's more than the number one pick in this year's NFL draft. Miles Garrett put up at the combine. When Des Cephas reaches back to make the catch, and if you're like me, and you have no perspective on what it is to lift anything heavy, then not only is that more reps at 225 than Miles Garrett, that was more reps at 225 than any other athlete at the Combine yeah. last year. And you combine that with a plus 600-pound squat, I think a 900-pound deadlift, you go through all of it. That all sounds hard. Yeah. I don't really know... Oh, it's it have any perspective, yeah, but it, it sounds hurts. hard. It, it kind of hurts everything. Third down and three. Play action. Horny Brook. Going downtown for Cephas, who's behind the defense. Quintez Cephas to the 12. And if Horny Brook puts that ball out in front of Cephas, it's a touchdown. Yeah, and this is a rare mistake here. And, you know, so conservative Northwestern has been with their safeties, but this is a mistake as Cephas is going to run right by him. He's got his head down. They're thinking block, and instead there is nobody, nobody running with Cephas. And you're right. If this ball could get out just a little bit earlier here, you've got a touchdown. Throw it right now. Throw it right now. There's no reason to hesitate. Hold it for a half second, and you give Northwestern a chance to chase it down. But an enormous play, something that was missing in that first half, and you knew there would be adjustments from this team first and 10 at the 11 Jonathan Taylor he's got another Wisconsin touchdown his second of the game and Sifa sets it up and that grateful red was waiting to explode a lot of patience i think with this fan base a lot of patience with this team they're not always going to look pretty right some of those body blows and the commitment to the run and obviously the turnovers were ugly in that first half but this is a program that's built on being a, a second half team on being a finishing team and what a way to start the second half coming out of the tunnel making those adjustments 
A four-play, 79-yard touchdown drive capped by Jonathan Taylor after Quintez Cephas set it up with a 61-yard reception. Some of those faces probably very familiar, certainly if you're a Wisconsin fan. And Jim Leonard wrote a foreword for that book, Walk On This Way, about the walk-on program at Wisconsin. Look at the notable walk-ons of the many, 92 of them since 1990. And since 1990, 20 of those 92 walk-ons have gone on to play in the NFL. That's amazing. And Bob, I talked to Troy from Magali, who's two, one of two current captains that are former walk-ons for Wisconsin. He said it's such a unique experience when you walk on here because there's expectations, right? You're treated like a scholarship player, and you're expected to contribute to the team, but there also seems to be a bit of a fraternity. He talked about some of the older players that started as walk-ons and went on to earn a scholarship and how they really mentored him along, and he said there's definitely a bond amongst Wisconsin walk-ons. The only big school in the state. It's a little bit like Nebraska. Reminds me in that way, too programs very similar and let's just say that's not how it is everywhere else other places walk-ons have their own locker room not treated the same as everybody else and that is not the way it goes down here and I think their history and tradition of success quiets any of that discussion Borson tight window incomplete intended for making Wilson broken up by Nick Nelson and these are tight windows and they're going to be tight windows in the second half and i can't repeat that enough if you're northwestern you're going to win this game it's going to be clayton thorson making these kind of real tight throws in the windows and obviously got to get a finish that ball hits make him between the one and the five yeah there's a lot of disturbance a lot of turbulence when you're throwing those inside slant routes but you've got to find a way on those early downs to avoid these second and tens it's two of eight on third down these afternoon two of nine now on third downs this afternoon Hand off to John Moten. It'll be third down and ten. Latrell Jamerson came up from his safety spot to help and run support. And now Northwestern off schedule and down by four. on third and ten. Delayed blitz and down goes Clayton Thorson. Chris Orr was the last man through. He delayed his blitz and that group up front for Northwestern couldn't pick him up. He delays his blitz. You call that a rush to cover right there. He's covering the running back but once that running back has to pick up the block right there, once he picks up Dooley, that is his responsibility, man-to-man -man coverage, and he now is free to rush. And Bob, this got to feel a little bit like the Jets, right? This got to feel a little bit like what you watch Buddy and crew do there with their blitz package on third down, because I'm seeing it. Now, there's no doubt that the Rex, Rex Ryan DNA is in the defenses being called by Jim Leonard. Here goes Nick Nelson. Good field position for Wisconsin. He gets all the way out to the 47-yard line in the punt return. A 36-yard punt, 12-yard return. We're going to have some fun today. Okay. Don't feel like you got to do anything out of character. Don't hurt yourself. All right. Uh, but maybe we'll warm up a little bit. And then do you guys ever throw into the garbage cans? Uh, we did like two springs ago. Did you? Yeah. Okay, good. I'll have an advantage. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so. Here we go. Put it in, no pressure. And just to hold on, hold on. I'm just a 42 year old guy. <laughs> hold on one second. Do you realize? Oh, okay. All right. Get up. Get up. Oh, a little close. Good. Very good. How about crossbar? That'd be nice. Can I let you win this one, you think, or not? You, you can okay. try to win it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gosh, darn it! Get it. Okay. There we go. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. Yep. Appreciate it. Thank you. Brock Ewart spending time with fellow lefty Alex Hornibrook, like looking in a mirror when you see Alex Hornibrook play the quarterback position for you. Just not enough of them. They're all pitching. Need more quarterbacks. Hornibrook on second down and long. Long throw outside the numbers. Breaking a tackle, Danny Davis. The freshman down inside the 10 to the 6. First and goal for Wisconsin. That's well, a gain of 32. His buddies are picking him up. He received us on the deep post earlier. 
And this time, just a simple little pitch and catch. We saw that out route earlier, and the true freshman does the rest. This Wisconsin team, that, that was encouraged pretty strongly at halftime to turn up the intensity. In every single phase here, offense, defense, special teams, and they've done just that to begin the second half. And now one of those secondary tacklers, Cairo, off the field. First and goal. Jonathan Taylor. Works his way to the five-yard line. This becomes an enormous set of downs. Enormous. Wisconsin marches down. They score a touchdown to begin the second half. This team has not given up a point the entire second half. The month of September, as a group, you go up 21-10 right now. And you make life awfully difficult on that sidelines for Pat Fitzgerald. Whereas if Northwestern can hold to a field goal, it stays a one-possession game and might put a little juice back into their sideline. Big momentum swing in the next two plays, one way or the other. Play action. Hornybrook, wide open, end zone, climbing the ladder. That's a, a touchdown for Danny Davis. Davis got free and set up the goal-to-go situation, and the freshman able to cap it, and there is the two-score lead. And you just can't help yourself defensively, especially when you get down there. That first step is going to be forward. The linebackers, the safeties, that time, Iguabuque, even the veteran himself, you just can't fight it. It's just that natural instinct to stop the run. And they all climb once again towards the line of scrimmage. And the freshman showing, well, kind of like his other buddy, Jonathan Taylor, a normal freshman here on campus in Madison. And Brock, how about Alex Hornibrook? Now four for four, 103 yards and a touchdown this quarter. He's been perfect in the second half. Play action pass. You knew they were going to come back to that a little bit more. Right? If, if you're going to commit to stopping that run and you're going to be aggressive, Paul Chris is going to say, great. Great, you go ahead. You're going to get some, some, some three and outs. And you're going to stop us a little bit in the first half, but you're just not going to be able to help yourself. And that's what you saw on the long, on the long pass to Cephas. Exactly the same thing there. You get nosy. You get on your toes defensively. It is just your human nature to come downhill and stop that run. Only Brook and crew, they paid off right behind them for big plays. And Wisconsin has now outscored their opponents in the second half, 82 to nothing so far this season. Leighton Thorson, there's a check down to Justin Jackson, and part of that block destruction leading to Justin Jackson, who came, came into today 109 yards away from passing Damian Anderson's all-time Northwestern rushing record, and he has nine carries for 25 yards. He has not been able to get anything going on the ground, and Northwestern's playing one-handed as a result. You know where it's easier to get guys to do block destruction in the NFL where they're getting paid? It's a lot easier to do. They understand it. That's my job. College kids, sometimes harder. Harder to teach them to be as selfless as they can be, and you can see it right there. I mean, because you're winning there, because guys are sacrificing, they're saying, you know what, I may not get on the tackle sheet. I may not get any stat sheet. I may not get any notoriety, but, man, I'm stopping their best player, and I'm making my team better playing for others. Jackson has been a non-factor, and as you saw, he's a big factor when Northwestern wins against Wisconsin. Third and six. Blitz off the edge. Down goes Thorson again. Jim Leonard dials up the pressure. And it is another sack, the fifth for the Badger defense. That one coming from Natrell Jamerson. And it's come from everywhere. It's come from linebackers. It's come with stunts. There's a four-man rush, and I like it. And I love there again. It's Jack Sitchie. Torn ACL, injured in the fall. Jim Leonard, the hugs that go around. That's a free safety that's coming. You just don't know where it's coming. It epitomizes that, that scheme that's in Jim Leonard, that I'm going to dictate defensively, that I'm going to finish. And that's exactly what Wisconsin's on their way to doing in the second half. Welcome back to Camp Randall. Bob Wischusen, Brock Ewart, Allison Williams. Set to start the fourth quarter. In the third quarter, Northwestern ran 19 plays and gained a total of 23 yards. And they almost get a punt blocked. Nice wander, got it away, but couldn't even get it to midfield. So now the pressure squarely on the Northwestern defense, down by two scores with Wisconsin starting in plus territory. <laughs> nah, you step you on the other guy's That's foot right. and grab your hamstring. That's <laughs> enough. Not enough to uh, get the gold statue and possibly get a roughing the kicker. Only a 31-yard punt. 
You got another shot play over the next three here. You got another good play action pass that you have built and developed through that heavy run. Blitz. Hornybrook. He'll take a shot. Drops it in to A.J. Taylor. All the way down to the 10 yard line, a gain of 33. Not a lot of rhythm in that first half and a whole lot more in the second half. Just a vertical game. You called out the blitz there pre-snap, and that blitz leaves you in man-to-man -man coverage. That's the safety again with UK in a matchup there with a receiver going down the seam. And can't let Hornybrook get comfortable. That's what everybody in the Big Ten is going to take from this film. If you hit him, if you move him, if you rattle him, you may get him out of rhythm in that first half and you got to keep him out of rhythm because if he gets hot and he plays confident he delivers Bradrick Shaw dragging tacklers close to the five yard line on your play action game works off of this running game that's why Hornybrook is six of seven for 149 yards in the second half and that's a six yard gain on first down to the five Again, down to the four-yard line. Wisconsin can pick up a first down inside the one, so this will be third down and three. Tyler Lancaster made the tackle. If Northwestern gets a stop and forces a field goal, it would still only be a two-possession game, so this is still a big third down for the Wildcats. You see the hands on the hips there. You didn't see that at all that first half. They were the ones getting after it, but man, they have been on this field in the second half, been worn down, have to rise up here. Hornybrook to the end zone, incomplete, looking for Cephas. So here comes the field goal group for the Badgers as Northwestern gets a red zone stop. They don't do a lot of that. That little clip that we had with Hornybrook, they don't throw into that back pylon an awful lot. That was trying to be a back shoulder, just a little too much mustard. So the first opportunity today for Rafael Gaglianoni to try for a field goal attempt. Three for four so far on the season. And this one a chip shot from 23 yards out. Still a two possession lead for Wisconsin, but now it's up to 14. Welcome back to college football presented by Walmart as we have played just a shade under four minutes in the fourth quarter and Wisconsin down by three at halftime have answered big time to take a two touchdown lead. They have outgained Wisconsin 189 to 23 in the second half and the only team left in FBS Jim Leonard's group defensively to not allow a second half point so far this season. That's the task in front of Northwestern. About to get the football back. Bob Schusen here with Brock Hewitt. Allison Williams down on the field. And taking a knee as Lees. It'll come out to the 25 yard line. Under pressure. Trying to avoid the sack. And going down again is Clayton Thorson. That is the sixth Wisconsin sack. Option toss to John Moten and makes it third down and about seven for Northwestern as we come up on ten and a half minutes to go in regulation time. And anybody who has played quarterback knows what's going on right now with Clayton Thorson, how fast your clock has been sped up, how difficult everything is pre-snap as you're trying to diagnose a pass rush and where this blitz is coming from. And just getting hit on every side with six sacks now for a defense that knows it and feels it. Five-man front showing pressure again. Not making any bones about it. Here they come. Six. And it's intercepted. Latrell Jamerson turns the corner. Stays in bounds. Inside the pylon. That's a Wisconsin touchdown. A pick six for Latrell Jamerson. Yeah, kind of like that Rex Ryan tree that Jim Leonard comes from, mixed in with some good old Wisconsin roots. 
not going to apologize about using that pressure and hitting and then watch my guy Jamerson here watch his eyes he is reading one guy he is reading that quarterback look at it he's reading him he is wishing that ball comes his way he is hoping it comes his way and then the special athleticism to finish down the sidelines Extra point for Gaglianoni, but it goes through. It's all Wisconsin here in the second half. The Badgers open up a three touchdown lead. Wisconsin has now outscored their opponents collectively in the second half 96 to nothing this season. And Jim Leonard's defense, a big reason why, as they are plus 24 today, adding to that number. And they've opened up a three touchdown lead. Now it's a time of desperation for Northwestern as they're about to get the ball back and Jim Leonard will be sending his defense right back out on the field probably dialing up some more pressures in sends it deep that'll come out to the 25 you know Mike Pettin was the defensive coordinator with the Jets under Rex Ryan but they were both in Baltimore on Jim Harbaugh's staff or John Harbaugh's staff, pardon me, back in 2008, they brought Jim Leonard in. Now, Rex knew him as a punt returner. That was the only reason they brought him into camp. <laughs> they, at the end of camp, they were light on safeties, but they were ready, the personnel department, to let him go. And Mike Pettin and Rex Ryan went to the personnel department and said, no way. This guy, after three weeks, knows our defense better than anybody here. Huh. They still drafted two safeties, and in spite of that, this former walk-on at Wisconsin made the team and went on to have a 10-year career in the NFL. And here's his defense putting pressure again on Clayton Thorson. I asked him for, you know, just a good story about Jim Leonard. So Mike Pettin said one night, team snack in Cleveland back when Leonard was still playing, obviously. He was putting together an all-star roster of guys he had played with. Peyton Manning, Ray Lewis, John Ogden, Champ Bailey, so on and so forth. And he has some roster of players that he's played with. Thorson over the middle, and that should be good for a first down to Skoranek. So Mike Pettin comes over to Jim Leonard and says, well, who's the defensive coordinator? It's got to be me or Rex if you're putting together an all-star coaching staff. He says, neither of you. I'm the coordinator. One of you guys can be my quality control. And Mike Pettin said, you know what? At this point, that may turn out to be the way it works out. Maybe one of us will be the quality control for Jim Leonard here at Wisconsin, or who knows where else down the road. That one broke it up. That was almost a pick six. <laughs> In and out of the hands of Ramad Chalky Bowman. And on the carom, Derek Tindall had a shot at it. Yeah, you know what has become apparent here? A couple things, I think, Bob. Number one, Jim Leonard was patient. As patient as Paul Chris and his offense has been, uh, patient with this scheme, because you have not seen a lot of this nature, this blitzing the first month of this season. And number two, you know that it's well taught when guys' eyes are in the backfield as much as Wisconsin's are. These DBs flying, these, DB, these DBs not just running coverage, right, but they're getting the eyes in the backfield. They're reading the quarterback, understanding that why. I loved your dialogue with Jim yesterday. Why? You know, why don't more teams do this blitz package collegiately? What is your experience? I thought he was pretty sound with you in his reasoning, too. Well, they just don't have enough time, nope. right? I mean, you've only got 20 hours a week to work with these players hands-on. You're trying to dial up an NFL-esque blitz package and the concepts and how complicated it can be. Hard to do. Thorson. Again, we'll throw one deep. Just miss it at about the five-yard line. Jace James, the intended receiver. And that brings up fourth down near midfield. And if you're Northwestern, you go for it, yeah. and they will. Fourth down at seven. And I think what is so difficult about that, and it's both offensively and defensively, and Pat Fitzgerald knows this, you can get the concept in. You can get them in the right spots, but to get that next level understanding, and when you're doing as much, you know, as Rex Ryan's defenses typically do, and that Jim Leonard, you know, style, understanding the why for all of those things, that's where the complexity, and that's where the time strain really comes into play. Thorson delivers a strike on fourth down with a knee down killing the play but plenty good enough for a first down is Riley Lees at the Wisconsin 42. I don't think these Wisconsin guys don't know that they've pitched a shutout over the course of this season in the second half. 
They know it. And they want to keep it that way. Breaking a tackle is Jeremy Larkin. He's got nine yards. Dorsen's pass complete to number 28, Jeremy Larkin. Four-man rush. And open on the check down is Larkin. That's good enough for a first down. For the 29 of the Badgers with 5.45 to go. Kind of like their scoring drive in that first half, late in that second quarter. It was a lot of plays. Play action, Clayton Thorson. Long throw to the sideline, but he's got a wide open receiver. Flynn Nagel. And he's in the red zone, dragging tacklers. Finally out of bounds inside the 15. At about the 13-yard line, gain of 60. Thorson flips it, and that is good for a Northwestern touchdown. Ramad Chucky O'Bowman. The redshirt freshman got free in the first points of the season in the second half surrendered by the Wisconsin defense. And now the extra point attempt for Northwestern. And Brock, it would take a miracle, but you have to think Pat Fitzgerald is getting together his onside kick group over on the sideline with 4.46 to go, now down by two scores. The lead cut to 14 with the point after. And when we come back, expecting to see a Wildcats onside kick. Hans' team stays out for Wisconsin, and it looks like another onside kick opportunity. Will it come the other direction for Luke Otto? Let's see. He's going to kick a line drive and try and knock it deep inside the 20-yard line. Jamerson all the way back to about the two, scoops it up there, and he'll go down. Wise move at about the seven-yard line, 4.43 to go. But now Northwestern in the position where they have to use their timeouts. And will they surrender too much time needing to get the ball back twice? Yeah, but you're not surrendering the real estate. And you saw that. That was a cool shot of Fitzgerald on the sidelines. I think that signal, right, that to kind of pooch kick it. And you could not have executed that kick any better. You know, you don't want to just put a hang time and a fair catch. He hit that absolutely perfectly, and Coach knows it. Now for an offense, though, for Northwestern, that has no explosive quality. They might need all four minutes and 43 seconds to score twice, and now they're going to lose at least some of that, or they're going to lose their timeouts here with Wisconsin having the football. Jonathan Taylor brought down by Tyler Lancaster right at the line, and there is timeout number one called by Pat Fitzgerald. Yep, and you're going to probably see some heavy run here, and, and, and Northwestern is going to use these timeouts, but, I mean, look at the, look at the real estate. Look at the opportunity here. Second down and 10 for Wisconsin at their own six-yard line. Northwestern still with two timeouts left, but they have to have a three and out. Jonathan Taylor stretching to the outside. He's wrestled down inside the five. The second timeout called by Northwestern from the sideline. Kyle Cairo, who shook off that earlier injury, was there to make the tackle for loss. It'll be third and about 14. You come underneath this block here, you better be right because you've got containment. You come underneath that, you have to bring that running back down. And Cairo does just that. From the end zone, Hornybrook to throw. And that's broken up. Wow. So now not only does Northwestern get the stop, but by throwing it on third down, they preserve their final timeout, and they should get excellent field position. And Pat Fitzgerald's not giving up. That is great. That is wonderful emotion right there. And his team feeds off. It's been a def difficult second half. It was a brutal third quarter, in fact. But that shows you some of the grit that his team has, some of the selflessness that they've got on their side of the ball. And that was awfully dangerous. Late over the middle like that. That could have been catastrophic turnover. Body from the end zone. That's a good punt. Forces a fair catch from Nagel all the way back across midfield at the Northwestern 45-yard line. That's a 52-yard punt by a college kicker. With hang time. With hang time, forcing a fair catch. That, that's an NFL change of field position sure in terms of now time and score. 
All right, Cassidy, so now with the clock winding down, Thorson goes to work, finds Garrett Dickerson. Wildcats need two scores. They've got one timeout left, and the clock obviously an issue for a team that doesn't have much explosive quality to their offense. Here comes the rush. Thorson, another check down underneath, taking what is given. That's Justin Jackson. That's a first down. That'll stop the clock for the moment with 3.57 to go. How aggressive, Brock, do you now have to get if you're Jim Leonard? Can you keep on exchanging yardage for time? You're going to play sound, and you are not going to give up that big play until it's inside the 20. Thorson. Incomplete. Wisconsin's Jim Leonard made sure his defense was very aware of time, score, situation before taking the field. How many timeouts were available still? He made it very clear to his team this game is not over. You have to play till the end. And he's right. And they've got to create that negative play. That's where they were so dominant there for a quarter and a half, finding a negative, creating some sort of holding call, a negative play on their side defensively. And they're showing a little pressure here. Will they blitz? Here it comes, off the edge. Thorson steps up in the pocket, broke it up. Boy, that was well read by Natrell Jamerson. He came up and knocked it away from Jace James. Yeah, he's played his best game of the season. I don't think there's any doubt about that. You know, he's had the interception earlier, the pick six, and it's just the diagnosis that the former corner has switched positions to that safety spot. And but I like in this defense, he's often what you call the lurker. He's the free guy that's reading the eyes and using that quickness that he brings to the table. Third down and 10. Another blitz. Thorson on the slant, reaching and making the catch and breaking a tackle. That's Macon Wilson, or check that Riley Lees. He's got a first down and more. Inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line, and is able to stop the clock for the moment. Now it rolls again. And you pick your poison, you do bring that pressure, you create gaps. And one little missed tackle there, and one of the more explosive plays from this Northwestern offense today. Only a four-man rush. Over the middle, Nagel's got it. Down to the five-yard line. 3.09 to go. Plenty of time for Northwestern to get in the end zone and try an onside kick. And Thorson has said, okay, Hornybrook, you got into rhythm there in the second half. I'm finding a little rhythm here in the fourth quarter when I can stand upright, scan, and deliver. Thorson. End zone. That's caught. Northwestern's got a touchdown. Garrett Dickerson. It's a one-score game with just under three minutes to go. Give a quarterback a little bit of time and look at that rush, that blitzing rush. Now nope, you're just going to go with four. You see the defender fall down and the patience there in the guts and the grit and the resolve for number 18. They opted to kick it deep. That turned out to be a good decision. Now with only one timeout left, though, for Northwestern, you have to figure an onside kick is coming. Down by seven with 2.53 to go. So the hands team will most likely be back out there for Wisconsin. Where does Luke Otto go with the football? To which side? He'll bunt it straight forward. And it's gobbled up. Well done by Ryan Connolly. Before it even traveled 10 yards. Yeah, and as good as, and I think that look says it all, <laughs> that's kickers. As, as good as that last kick was, perfectly executed, uh, this one just didn't give you a chance. Right, you got to give more. You got to at least give us a chance, and he knows it. Frederick Shaw, the lone setback. And they'll give it to him. He'll bounce right. And he is brought down after a gain of four. And let's see if Northwestern opts to use the timeout here. Not yet. Pat Fitzgerald's going to wait. Second down and six. Shaw again. 
stood up after a gain of about two. And now the timeout will be called by Pat Fitzgerald with 2.03 to go. Northwestern now out of timeouts, but you take about four or five seconds for a running play and a 40-second play clock. They can take the clock down, exactly as we yep. said, to about 120, maybe 115 to go in the game. Then they would be punting. It all depends on whether or not Northwestern can get the stop on third and four. They don't get this stop in its victory formation for Wisconsin. And you don't throw it here. You threw it on the previous third down. I don't see any rhyme or reason whatsoever to put this ball in the air. Three tight ends. Bradbrook Shaw, the lone setback. And they will run it with Shaw. And he will be stopped short. At least two yards shot. So that clock will start to wind down inside of a minute and a half to go before Wisconsin, I would think, would probably call timeout as the play clock winds down. No deep man back for Northwestern. They are simply playing safe defense here. And let's see if Anthony Lottie can kill it inside the 10-yard line with no return man back. Perfectly executed. You can't do it any better if you are Wisconsin with 109 to go. Downing it at the two-yard line. Well, he was a 53-yarder earlier with Max hang time, putting out of his own end zone, and this time trying to keep that ball out of his end zone. We have said this has felt like an NFL game, and most NFL games come down to the final five minutes. I don't think we thought this one would get quite there at 31 to 10, but that's NFL specialist execution. Lottie kicked it deep. Natrell Jamerson caught it on a fly at the two-yard line, and now those that are still here at Camp Randall will be in the ear of Clayton Thorson, 98 yards away from a tie with 109 to go. And stumbling and being given the out-of-bounds whistle is Macon Wilson. It looked like he fell in the field of play. That saves a lot of time for Northwestern. Four-man rush. Thorson from the end zone, rolling. Under pressure, he'll go down! It's a safety! Dakota Dixon will end it. Fitzgerald with the look on his face. I'm sure as Clayton Thorson Brock comes to the sideline. Anything but a sack there. Throw it anywhere. And maybe the game's still alive. Yeah, and as much of an NFL game as that felt like, that just reminds you, guess what? These kids are still in college, and they're going to have an history exam next week. <laughs> because that, as good a play as that was from Dakota, and he's awesome, and he is the heart and soul and the energizer of this team, and, and good for him to close the ground and to finish here. But Thorson's eyes, they're down the field, but you have got to feel that. And then once you're outside the pocket, man, you sail that. You put in the second row, and it's over. But there's no, no way, no world you ever want to take that risk as you're clo closing into the boundary. And Pat knows it. My guy got me there. He put us in this position to be one score down with a minute to go, did Clayton. But that is, that's both a mental and physical error on the grade sheet tomorrow. There's the pooch kick. And it is bobbled and immediately going down as Jamerson at midfield. Right, you're competing so hard. You're playing so hard, man. You want so badly to make this thing happen. Let me talk about one of the most epic comebacks. If you can find a way to march within 99 yards and tie this thing up, being down three scores in the fourth quarter. Physically tight. What was it, mentally loose? Justin Wilcox, I love that line. Physically tight, man. You're giving it everything you got, but you've got to be mentally nimble. And you've got to be loose, and you've got to make the right decision. And in that case, just sail it into the stands and give yourself another play. So Paul Christ's team will improve to 4-0 to start off the season. And this one, as he predicted, was a different level of competition. The final score is pretty indicative of the fight that they were in with Northwestern and had to hold on and play the full 60 minutes yep. in order to get to the point where finally... It is victory formation, and that will make it official. And that familiarity breeds some contempt. It also breeds, you know, the, the other team. Confidence. Yeah. Yep. If you're a junior or older on that Northwestern team, you've had the experience of beating Wisconsin. Yep. 
That was a good football game. Yeah, and they're going to give people a handful this season, and Penn State's going to visit them next week. And that won't be an easy game. They've got enough pieces in the right place. they just got to do it snap in and snap out over four quarters. Could be an interesting season for Paul Christ. He's down there with Allison. Coach Christ, you said this would be your team's first test of the season. How did they grade out? Well, I mean, proud of the effort, and I uh, thought guys competed, and Northwestern's a good football team and, and well-coached, and proud of the way the guys kept battling and playing, and it wasn't easy, certainly. You were down three at the half. What was the difference in the second half? I thought, you know, I thought our defense played really well in the second half early, and I think we'd be able to take advantage of some good field position, and I thought we just executed a little bit better. Offensively, you've got your red shirt sophomore quarterback out there without his favorite target, tight end Troy Fumagalli, out for the game. What did Alex Hornibrook show you in the second half, overcoming those first half interceptions? Yeah, I mean, Alex is a, he's a competitor, and, you know, I think he settled in, and, you know, this by far from a, a pretty game in many ways, but they just kept playing, and, you know, proud of the way the guys played this game. we got a lot of work to do, though. Great. Thank you so much, right, Coach. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right, Allison, thanks very much. Florida State and Wake Forest coming up next. Our final score once again, a nine-point win. 33-24 for the Badgers over the Wildcats. For Allison Williams and Brock Ewart, I'm Bob Wischusen. So long from Madison.